Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 52. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here now for the Class E Post 03 Asian Tour. Um, this is for any vehicle that is uh, after 2003, E-Class from Japan. Sorry, from Asia, but I selected specifically Japan because that's pretty much the majority of the Asian cars in this game are Japanese. Anyways. We're going to be starting with Twin Ring Mategi. Moving on to Suzuka. Then Twin Ring Mategi. Then Suzuka. Then Twin Ring Mategi. Sorry, we got two of the same... Ra okay. Sure. Whatevs. Alright, here we go. The Eclipse... This is quite frankly one of the strangest cars that they added to uh, Colin McRae Dirt 2. A game that was about dirt racing and they added the Eclipse. I don't think I've ever seen a Rally Eclipse to be honest so... That's why it was a bit strange. But it also is quite a nice car so I'm not going to complain. I am going to complain about the fact that this car's a bit sluggish around those corners. Bit is an understatement, I'll be honest. Not bad. The one thing that I find absolutely astonishing about um, just games in general is the fact that when you look at stuff like, um, what's it called? Gran Turismo PSP. Or any PSP game for that matter, but focusing on Gran Turismo PSP. That game was absolutely stunning in terms of how much content was in there, the quality of the content, and the fact that it fit on a 1.2 gigabyte disc and was still perfectly playable. It's crazy. The romance is dead. Nice. Ruby, 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 Ruby! A dear, 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 dear! Oh, why you do it, do it, do it? Meow, meow, meow. Do lack of interest. Tomorrow is cancelled. I have a feeling when the next uh, Forza Motorsport comes out that there's going to be a very dramatic focus on cosmetics. I mean, you think Motorsport 7 had a huge amount of, like, race suits and stuff like that? 
I can see them doing that again. But they'll have other kinds of cosmetics as well. Um, like individual glove cosmetics, shoes. Or they might just go simple route and let you design your own. Make like a livery editor, but for your suit. Again, that could be an option. And you don't really see you with me. I forgot to shift up. Lovely. Dear, 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 dear. Da da da. Do do. Yo, hands, what up? Uh, mainly because I got it like two days ago. Kind of forgot. <laughs> I've played it once and I haven't really gone back to it yet. It's a really fun game, actually. Um, I think I'll be playing it more on my Steam Deck once that all goes through. Yes, I have pre ordered my Steam Deck. Hopefully. I'll get it at some point. I might even do an unboxing video on YouTube. Why not? Yeah, I really... I've played Descenders before, but I played it on Xbox. It was really clunky on Xbox. It, was, it wasn't it was 60 frames, I don't think. It didn't feel that smooth. Um, but when I was playing it on PC, it was a cracking game. I think it would be perfect for a handheld form factor so something like my steam deck so I'm having to because um, when I get my uh, I'm going to have to buy a memory card for it um, yeah it's, it, it's pretty stable on PC Pretty smooth on PC. Yeah, that's not bad. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a memory card that's got like I think 512 gigs. Probably be the one I'm looking at. Costs about 50 quid. And I'll put on enough games to pretty much fill that. Nice. Woo woo. 20% discount on driveline upgrades by Rally Art. And 20% discount on oil and cooling upgrades by HKS Cooling. Woohoo! Oh! Right, this is the first Suzuka race out of two. Uh, that last race was the first uh, Twin Ring Mategi race out of three. We were doing around that track, so. This does seem like a little bit of a half ass championship. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, get around the corner. Oh, he's right on my ass. Don't let me go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm 
I'm going to say this now. I am not installing Borderlands 3 on my Steam Deck. That's for sure. That thing is absolutely massive. It's like 140 gigabytes. That'd be a pain in the ass to try and run. I don't think it's got USB ports. It's. I'm not sure how many Type C it's got. I think it's got one on the top and one on the bottom, but I'm not 100% sure. I know it definitely has one on the top, though. Um, but what you can do is if you plug in a. <clears throat> I don't know. To be perfectly honest, if that works, uh, I haven't seen it. I can only assume that it would give you functionality for that. Um, I wouldn't see why it couldn't do that. The only problem is, um, I don't know if it would work with Linux. Because obviously it's a Linux operating system. The hard drive might not be able to communicate between like... So it would have to be like a Steam Deck only hard drive, probably. I I don't see why it wouldn't work. But I also haven't seen anyone use it yet. It would be odd. Maybe I could try it out. I might try it out, see if I can plug a hard drive into a Steam Deck. I don't think it'd be a... In terms of practicality, it'd be pretty pointless. I think it'd be cheaper and just more user-friendly to just buy a 512 gigabyte SD card. Because they're going for like £45 now. Like, big SD cards are dropping in price like crazy. Like, you can buy a 1 terabyte SD card for like £70 now. £80. Which... Yeah, sure, it's the same price as a 4 terabyte hard drive. But, for the fact that you, it's simple and easy to use, it's a no-brainer, really. The numbers, the spaces, too. Disciples and the young. Yeah, you can get 1 terabyte micro SD cards. Not even like full SD cards, micro SD cards. Mm hmm. I have a 256 gigabyte micro SD card in my phone at the moment. Um, but that micro SD card will stay in my phone. I have a 128 in my capture card, which is used for like video recording. Um, but yeah. I'd probably end up using that 128, actually. Using the 128 gigabyte SD card and just putting that in the Steam Deck for the time being. When I get mine. And then maybe look at getting a bigger one. Because the, the thing with the Steam Deck is it's not designed to run big AAA games, like really intense ones. So... Those ones that take up a lot of storage space probably won't end up using. So, like, the biggest game I probably end up having is WRC. That'd be about 30 gigs. But then a majority of the other games would be, like, PSP games. I'd have some... And each of the PSP games is up to a gigabyte, pretty much. Then I might have some... I don't know... couple of first person shooter games maybe I definitely install Yakuza that's about 25 gigabytes but the Yakuza games are amazing this 
south by the fire sun and the morning will come soon. Hans, did you see the announcement for that new uh, Yakuza game? It's called um, Like a Dragon Ishini? Ish something. Um, it's by Ryu Gogotaku, same studio that does Judgment and the Yakuza series. It has the characters of Yakuza, but it's based off of Samurai instead, uh, rather than the Yakuza, which is pretty cool. It's sort of like the roots. Um, I think it will be quite interesting. The only problem is... I'm hoping... Wow. If, if when you say pre-sequel, you mean 120 years before the first game was even set, then yeah. <laughs> Very much pre-sequel. Um, but yeah, on a, on a serious note, um, it is quite an interesting concept that they're doing. As long as it's not a turn-based game like um, like a dragon was. I say like a dragon, but it's going to be called like a dragon. The Yakuza like a dragon. If it's not turn-based like Yakuza like a dragon, then I think this new like a dragon game is going to be... It's so complicated, honestly. But... That's a car I've never seen the newer Forza games anymore. No, the Eclipse. It's a fairly pretty dead car nowadays. Not really used much. How are you doing, Sinsu? Hopefully you're having a good day. Ah, uh, I just really hope that Sega and that can get along and actually like release Judgment on PC. That'd be awesome to play on PC. About 13 grand, not bad. 20% discount on differential upgrades. Woohoo! You pre ordered a game man. Yes, I pre ordered the game man. <laughs> it is the big boy game boy. Ah. Oh, my head hurts. Send me this song. It's Go With The Flow by um, Queens of the Stone Age. It all says it in the top corner. Somewhere. <laughs> if you look in the top uh, top right corner of the stream, you'll see every song. Or the song that's currently playing. Do you believe it in your head? This song's been featured in so many racing games. I think it was in some Midnight Clubs, maybe? I think it was in a Midnight Club. Um, it was in Motorstorm, Arctic Edge. I know that for a fact. Yeah, futuristic Game Boy. And Gran Turismo 4, yeah. Was it... Go with the flow that was in Gran Turismo 4, or was it No One Knows? Because I thought it was No One Knows that was in Gran Turismo 4. It's this one, okay, fair enough. I might have it mixed up with someone else then. But uh, No One Knows is a another big song off this album, which was used in like, quite a few video games as well. We just hit 51 hours on our playthrough timer, which is poggers, dude.
I've been infected with restless whispers and cheats. Honestly, every time someone tells me to do GTA 5 RP, I get baited into it and I find it the most boring thing ever. Just because GTA itself as a format is just so milked now. Like, it's dry. No one knows was in GT4 as well. Oh, was it? So I was right and wrong. <laughs> Let's go. I'm simultaneously correct and incorrect at the same time. <laughs> because I played the fool for you. Yeah. There's actually a website. Um, if you search up NFS soundtracks, um, it has all of the soundtracks for any racing game that's ever existed. Um, I know it sounds misleading because it has NFS and that's sort of the main ones, but pretty much any racing game that you can think of, um, the soundtrack for it is on that website. So it's actually a really useful site if you're looking for just racing game music. Um, that's what I use to try and find it. And most of the songs on there as well come with an accompanying uh, YouTube video. Um, some of them don't work anymore because obviously they're not... Um, they might have been taken down or whatever. But it's good that there are YouTube videos on there so you can listen to the songs. And if they don't work, you just search it up on Spotify or something like that. Guitar Hero had No One Knows as well. Did it? Which Guitar Hero? Because I know um, Guitar Hero 3 was um, 3s and 7s by Queens of the Stone Age. Bum 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 it might have been the first one then. If it's just Guitar Hero, then that would have been the first one. But Guitar Hero 1 and 2 were shit. So. Because I played the fool for you. I need to get an Xbox 360 wired Guitar Hero controller. 5 fret Guitar Hero controller. So I can play some Clone Hero. First grid. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, No One Knows is also in um, Dirt 4. As well. It's part of the soundtrack for that game. We've got some rules to follow. Dun 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 That and this. These and those. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. No one knows. Dun 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 dun. Such a tune. What a vibe. And pretty much every Rise Against song has been in every single racing game at some point. The problem is, a lot of newer bands are focusing on just making their music and just making music. They're not making bangers that... Like, this kind of genre's sort of died out. 
I think Rise Against is the only band where I think their music has been really good throughout the years. Not just at a specific point in their career. And Bring Me The Horizon is overrated. If you think they're amazing, then you're a shit person. Yeah, so in my library, I've got 76 games that are actually able to run on Steam Deck with zero problems that are completely verified. Help is on the way. Come on, keep it going, keep it going. No. I do like how um, strict Steam have actually been for, um, what's it called? Verifying Steam games for deck. Um, because apparently there's a lot of criteria that games have to hit to be verified for Steam Deck. Anything else is classed as playable. Uh, and if it if you can't play the game without doing some tweaking, it's uh, unsupported. Straight up. So, they're, they're really strict. And I think that's good. Because as a platform for Steam Deck... And Steam in general as well. It helps Steam as well. But for Steam Deck specifically, it means that if developers want people to be buying their games for Steam Deck and buying their games on Steam rather than say... Well, I, I don't know. Maybe that's a bad, bad example. But um, instead of buying it on Xbox or PlayStation, people might buy it more on Steam because you've got it on handheld and also a PC so for them to do that they've got to make sure their games run and it's really good what Steam is doing like if you even down to if when you press play it comes up with a menu where you do your options and that you know like the pre-splash text that you get on a PC game before then pressing play and loading the game. That class is a Steam Deck game to be playable and not verified. If it loads up with anything other than the game itself when you press play, it can't be a verified game. Which is crazy. But makes sense. Yeah, so... Some games have their own launcher. So, for example, uh, Fallout 4. Um, when you load that in, when you load up Fallout 4, it loads up a launcher that tells you like what DLC is installed, um, what your graphic settings are, the, the basic stuff. And then you just press play, and then you get into the game. But that launcher is enough to class a game on Steam to be um, just playable rather than verified. Because Steam wants the, the games that run on it to be perfect. So Borderlands 2 isn't a verified game and it won't be a verified game until they get rid of that pre-launcher. Which is really good. I mean, you can still install any game on Steam, whether it's verified, playable, unplayable, unsupported, whatever, untested. You can download it no matter what, but obviously, if, if it says unsupported, most of the time you're not going to actually try it, are you? I might, though, because I'm a bit of an idiot, and I want to see if I can get 
WRC 9 to run on it. Because that is actually classed as unsupported. So. But yeah, it's pretty cool. But when they, when they announced the Steam Deck, I was really sort of like, that's cool and all, but what kind of use case will I actually use it for? And when people started getting their hands on the Steam Deck, I started seeing emulation for like PSP, PS2, Xbox 360 emulation, PS3 emulation. Granted, those last two are a bit questionable. Kind of idiot who half fried a laptop with GTA San Andreas texture modded to the shit. <laughs> but yeah, like even then, it's it's fairly obviously the verified stuff means that you can just install it and you don't have to tweak anything. It just works. That's sort of the stuff that I like, but stuff that says playable doesn't scare me either because. If I've got to go and click through a couple of menus, I'll click through a couple of menus. I don't care. Um, as long as I can play the game I want to play. If it means I've got to do like a 30 minute ritual every time I want to load up Fallout 4, for example, then no, I'm not going to play it. But... Yeah, I, I really like the idea of the Steam Deck. Like, it's grown on me so much. I just wish I put my pre-order in earlier because I would have liked it for now for when I went away but it's what it is <laughs> I mean technically when you load a game you're summoning all sorts of creatures so who knows get off the grass gracias amigo Make you need to touch grass. <laughs> I do. I'll be totally honest, I do. Infinity. Yeah, I mean, I went outside quite a bit for a couple of weeks, but this week I've just not bothered going out because, one, I don't like going outside. That's quite obvious. Two, I haven't had a need to go outside. Three, I'm going to be going on a two-week holiday soon. So, don't see the point in going outside because I'm going to be outside for two weeks. And four, I've lost my mic and I've forgotten what four was. I've completely forgotten what four was. Oh yeah, four. I've got all these YouTube videos to sort out before I go away. So, woohoo! 20% uh, discount on valves and displacement upgrades. Nice. All right, here we go. Race number three around Twin Ring Mategi. The final race of this championship. CEO entrepreneur born in 1964 Jeffrey Jeffrey Bay is us Give you 1.8 mil in nine minutes of GTA Online. Sure. <laughs> nah, I've, I've given up completely with GTA. It, 
the game itself just bores the absolute arse off of me now. Oh, GTA on, um... Hey, Kate, first one in the chat. Let's go. <laughs> GTA on Steam Deck might be an interesting one to try out and test. It would be just a test. It wouldn't be an actual playthrough on it. Thank you for the poster check. Essentially, just join in for the fun with the boys, but single player GT5, GTA 5 is a shitload of interesting stuff to do. Single player can. Um, the problem I have with GTA is the fact that online, it's just the same stuff over and over again. They didn't... They made everything behind a paywall as well, which I understand it's a business, but at what point are people actually allowed to have fun? without having to fish out a crap ton of money every single time they want to have fun in their game that they've already paid for, you know. Like, I understand DLC is DLC, but make it a DLC then. Don't make it a thing that's like, oh yeah, you can have this. But you've got to work your fucking ass off for it, kind of thing. Because no matter what, you can't then buy it, because then they also put an insane price on it as well. Like, I'm not going to spend however much, like, 20 quid, 30 quid for 2 million credits just for, like, a bunker or something. I remember the, um, I did it on Xbox a lot. Which is the reason why my Xbox GTA character has so much money. There was an exploit where you could take a car. Um, and if you did a certain route. Um, what's it called? If you did a certain route and then went into a certain hangar. It basically gave you five grand. Every five seconds. So you stick a rubber band on your controller that would end up having your character just walking in circles. Um, when you were in that hangar, you basically just ended up getting five grand every five, ten seconds. If you left that running for an hour, you had like two mil. Leave it running for overnight, hoping that the servers don't go down as well. Uh, you'd end up waking up with like 20 mil. Easily. Um... It was a good exploit, but they they actually didn't patch it in the first patch that they sent out for GTA. Actually, was still working perfectly fine. Um, it was only on the second patch that they patched it. But uh, then there was another patch. It was fairly long-winded and repetitive because you actually had to do something. But it was copying the cars in the arena garage or whatever it was and then selling them again uh, and that got I don't even know how long it was but we were doing it for months before it got patched um, and that one was okay but again it was very tedious and very long winded and it would take you like an hour to get 800 grand 900 grand so, it, it wasn't worthwhile in the long run. I just do six heists in an hour and I have like 10 mil with these. Essentially, just sprint into the main target and running off the compound. That's fair enough. 
Can you just keep redoing heist? Because I thought you had to do the setup every time you wanted to do a heist, right? Times like these, you learn to live again. Ah, fair enough. You remember that, um, internet disconnection glitch that would end up basically deleting body panels off of your car in Need for Speed 2015? I remember people doing that, like, crazy on PlayStation. Ended up with cars that just basically did not have any of it. Times like these, you learn to love again. Unpopular opinion. The only body customization that involves removing panels that I would accept is a hood delete. If you take off the hood so that you can see the engine, I'd accept that. Anything else, no. It looks horrendous. Especially on older cars. It's even worse on older cars. Not bad, let's get our bonus money! Nice! 22 grand. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.